Hi, Josh. We're back with some more vanilla Minecraft. Today is the very last day of my vacation. And this is the first thing that I'm recording for this episode, which means if you only account for the recordings that I've made, I did not get ahead of my upload schedule. Bad YouTuber. Bad. But I do have a couple of buildings designed for our expansion of the town. Uh-oh, sunset. I'm going to have to make this quick. Over here, I have a building designed that's going to set itself into the hill. And I'm a big fan of, of the way it turned out. And I hope that you like it once we make it today. And, and by today, I mean sometime between now and when this video goes live. I have two weeks to do it. Let's hope we can actually pull it off. I also have a building planned for over here. It's going to set into the side of this hill. We're not going to dig into the hill at all, but it's going to be set against the side. So I don't know that I'll get all of the villagers in place, but we will get both buildings built today. As for getting the villagers in place, we're doing pretty all right. We're making progress. We're getting them all into the stalls where I can set their workstations down and figure out which trades I want to get from them. And we've got some more in this uh, drop hole pit. You know, the, the bottom of the breeding pair. Uh, I'm pretty sure this pit is getting to the point where the breeding pair is going to stop. They'll start getting those angry clouds. But that's okay. We've got a decent amount here. And for the one building, I believe I need 16. For the building that's going to go over here, I need 16 villagers. I'm not sure how many I need for the building that's going to go over there, but I'll figure that out later. As I said earlier, we have two weeks. It's not a ton of time, but it's something. Uh, as far as what else I've been doing, other than designing buildings in a creative world where they're not actually going to do us much help, I have tried to smooth out the curve of this road a little bit. If you look at the map, it looks slightly less awkward now, right around this curve here. And I have built some filters down here. I told you last episode that I was going to get this done off camera, and I got cactus and salmon installed. Everything else is going into here for now. This is still very concerning, but um, I have been putting myself into spectator mode so I can drift through and check on the axolotls because, full disclosure, since I have that ability, it's so much easier than digging into every single enclosure and checking. And I just do not have the time for that. As far as our uh, glow ink goes, we already have half a double chest full. And uh, our regular squid ink is slightly lacking in that regard. But that's okay. Because I do... You hear that? That's a squid getting killed right now. <laughs> Look at that timing. Uh, I do plan to dry out the river over here at the end of the road, like I mentioned. And I do plan on drying out the river over that direction where it curves around near the house. Let's look at the map. I'm going to dry out this entire section right here that leads all the way up to this sandbar where the bay starts. And I'm going to put kind of a seawall here. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping to use some uh, concrete, I think, to make like the yellow and black striped don't drive your car into this type of thing. Uh, I have a few examples that I've seen in real life that I'm going to base it on. I might also try to Google some images. I think I'm going to dry out this section right here that gets real close to the townhouses. And uh, it connects conveniently right here, the land does, so that we can use that as our breaking point so the river just sort of ends here. And I think I'm just going to drag it around here and then try to do what this does and just taper it off here so that it looks like it naturally ends. If I can dry out this section right here and this section right here, I think that our spawn rates all along here will improve. I'm not going to worry about any of the river back here behind the monastery for now, and I'm not going to worry about anything farther away. I would also like to get to work on this hill, on lowering it and making it uh, slightly less of an impediment to our visuals, but I'm not going to do that today. That is a project that we will probably get to in the near future, though, so that we can start to exploit this large flat area back here. I have also been doing a lot of farming. As you can see, this is not just 100% grown and fully static. I have actually been going over there. I turned this into 100% carrots 
because uh, as we saw last episode, I burned through most of the carrots making these guys make babies for us. And I was already starting to deplete my potato stock quite a bit. So I'm trying to grow more carrots. I'm still growing more wheat because bread is even more effective than carrots. And uh, I've just been letting our goods build up over here in the bodega. So we're going to move on from that stuff and get into these buildings. And then I'll explain what each of them are going to be used for. All right, buddy. So we're going to get started on a time lapse that's going to cover two buildings. Buckle in, because this is going to be a long one. This building, as you can see, is going to cover the spider spawner hole. So I want to house some Fletchers here. Now, unfortunately, you're only going to see me build the outside, because I don't have the inside designed yet. But that's okay. We can get to that at some other point in the future, when we're ready to move villagers in. I really like the way that the outside came together. My idea behind this was that I was going to make a multi-unit townhouse building different from the brownstones behind it, where we live and have all of our storage. Right now you can see me building the entrance to the basement apartment style uh, unit. And above that is the, I guess, front porch or walkway that will lead to the front doors for the two upstairs units. I know that I said that I wanted to build a row of buildings that would stretch all the way over to where our little bodega tent looking thing is right now so that we could make it a proper first story corner store. But I really like the variety of, of shapes and indents that I managed for the, the walls on this so I don't know that I'll actually connect anything to it. That is something that we'll explore in the future. For now, this is going to be a completely standalone building. I'm going to warn you right now, your brain is not playing tricks on you. The camera is moving ever so slightly. The first several times that I watched this time lapse after I had recorded and rendered it, it really tripped me out because I wasn't sure what was happening. I thought that I was, I don't know, having a stroke or something, but no, the camera is actually moving. And I did not realize when I built this render that I had made such a subtle movement with the camera. I'm sorry for that, and I hope it doesn't mess with you like it messed with me. While we finish this building and move on to the next, I'd like to talk about the life of the channel a little bit. And then we'll talk some more about the next building when we get there. I'm sure that you've noticed me mention several times in the past couple episodes trying to get ahead of my upload schedule, and failing to do so. So I don't know how the professional YouTubers do it, but I suspect it has everything to do with them not having to work 40 hours a week for somebody else in an office somewhere that they have to commute to. So even though I'm only uploading a Minecraft episode every two weeks, I'm still having a really hard time keeping up with that schedule. I just don't have the time for it. And it's starting to stress me out again, trying to keep up with a schedule for which I've set myself impossible goals. So what's going to happen now is that we're going to take this series up to episode 20, and then we're going to put it on hiatus again. There are some other games that I want to play and that I want to share with you, and right now, I just don't have the time to even play them, much less record and edit and upload them. So, we're going to do two more episodes after this one in the vanilla Minecraft world, and then we're going to move on to something else, at least for a while. I think that I would like to do a Season 2 of Surviving Mars. And that's because not only do I miss that game and want the opportunity to show you a hopefully successful run, but they have released another content update. It's called Above and Below, I think, and it looks very exciting. It introduces some new tech into the science tree, and it introduces new settings where you can build stuff, and I'm very, very excited for it. Now, I had already had the idea to start a season two of Surviving Mars, and I had already recorded about three or four hours of gameplay, but that was before the new update came out. So I think I'm just going to trash that and we'll start a brand new game with the new content. 
I'm not sure what else we'll do after that. We'll see. I know that Raft is going to wrap up at some point in the future, and I think that Tibbs and at least one other friend are going to join me in playing another game. And I will record all of that and upload all of that for you in place of Raft. Once the next season of Surviving Mars ends, then we will come back to Minecraft, hopefully rejuvenated and with a back catalog of stuff that I've had the time to actually put care into and make some really good builds for you and get some well-edited episodes. Now this building, I'm very excited about. If you notice, I've been using terracotta for the decorations, and that's because this is where we are going to house our stonemasons. I gotta tell you, glazed terracotta, it's a fucking nightmare. It's not a lot of fun to work with, but, you know, we do what we gotta do to make things look good sometimes, and I think that this turned out really well. The glazed terracotta set into the ground there at the front entrance looks fucking fantastic when it's set in a proper pattern. And those two big banner things up on the roof I think turned out really well. The bits in the windows there are just for a little bit of background decoration tucked in and hiding behind those uh, nether brick fences that I used. And there is going to be more terracotta here on the inside to denote which stonemason is going to sit in which location. You'll see that in a minute. I was wrong in the intro when I said that this building needed 16 uh, villagers, because if you do the count right now, it's 16 for each type, the unglazed and then the glazed. So we're going to need 32 villagers in this building. And that means that there is very, very little chance we will actually put them in place today. This time lapse was a lot of fun to record. Trying to figure out how to make the camera move inside a building was a brand new challenge for me, and I really, really enjoyed how it came out once I figured out how to move the camera around. So I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Now, all that's left to this time lapse and the build is just the cleanup work. I'm finishing up the last row of villager cells right now, and then I'm going to install the floor down here. And I think that I ran out of quartz before I could do the roof up on the second story, so I'll have to go nether mining for that. Uh, but that's fine. We'll, we'll get to that soon. Uh, this right here that I'm digging right now is a stairway that goes down into our mines, so that's nice. I'm glad that we have something there. But basically, we're done with these buildings. Okay, so I was wrong at the very end of the time lapse there. I did have enough quartz to finish this ceiling. That's kind of a relief. I hope you don't mind that we had a very long time lapse right there. Uh, but there was a lot of building done. And so I figured uh, we'd, we'd take some time and have a chat and uh, show you the whole thing at a speed that our brains could process. Because I don't know about you, but when I sped it up any faster than that, my brain just kind of fritzed out. Now, down here, and, and up there, but I, I'm going to focus on down here, this is how we are going to hold the villagers in place. I will give them each their workstation, and then I will place a trapdoor on top of it. And they won't be able to get out, because there's, there's really only a block. But they will think that they can get out to their workstation and past it to socialize, because, you know, everybody thinks that this is a passable block. So, hopefully, that will also protect them. But up here, I am, just for the sake of safety, going to install some fences and gates. I know it won't look great, but it'll keep them alive. It'll keep them protected from zombies. Uh, the zombies will definitely be able to see in, and they will be very angry, and they will hang out here just outside the fences, I'm sure, and we'll have to come out and kill them anytime we're out here during the daytime because there is a little bit of an overhang that they'll be able to hide under. That's unfortunate, but... I really liked the idea of having this big open corner entrance, and it's just, it's, it's not safe. <laughs> now, I am going to leave these empty for now, because if I install the workstation and the trapdoor, it's going to be much harder to get the villagers in. And even now, the way that everything is set up, I'm going to have to build, like, big fence lines around each of these and truck them in via minecart and, and just hope that they don't bounce outside of the fences when I break the minecart. Because we've seen how tricksy these fucking villagers can be when they get knocked out of a minecart. 
sometimes they glitch through things. And I'm going to have to be very careful to avoid that. But once they're all in place, it's going to be amazing to just walk in here and say, I need this color terracotta, or I need this color glazed terracotta. We're never going to need glazed terracotta. I just want to have the villagers. And we'll just be able to come up and trade with them. The problem is that I have to do a very similar thing to what I did with the library. And I'll have to keep all of the villagers uh, down down there in their in their little trading hole. And uh, I'm going to have to just kind of farm through workstations. Just set it down, break it, set it down, break it, until I get the right color terracotta. And I think I have to trade with the villagers to level them up in order to figure out what color terracotta they trade. So that's probably going to take a very long time. So that's something that I will do off camera. And it's, let's be honest, it's probably not going to be done before the series goes on hiatus. <laughs> that, that, is, that is something that I will probably spend several weeks on. But I want to get it right. And I want this to be populated. And I want to be able to just come in here anytime we want and grab a color of terracotta. Now, for the time being, we don't have any concerns about running out of terracotta because... Remember when I went to the Mesa and I just farmed and farmed and farmed and dug and dug and dug? Well, we have a ton of terracotta. And thanks to one of the uh, Vanilla Tweaks plugins that I got at the very beginning of this series, um, we can take this terracotta and a die and turn it into this or any of these. And that is how I've been making all the different colors. But if we build with a lot of terracotta, eventually even this massive supply will run out. So I wanted to have that available to us. As for this building, which again, I love. I think it turned out really well. Uh, we're gonna put Fletchers in here. I don't know how many because I have not designed the inside. And as you can see, it is still just full of dirt and completely empty. And as a matter of fact, I should probably light this place up because it will become a miniature mob farm. But this is where our spider spawner hole is. Now, I did dig a path from here that leads over to where our melon and pumpkin farm hallway is from the townhouses. And it's basically right here in that path. So we can, we can always eliminate this completely as an entrance. And we can just go in through the townhouses. But I did want to have this available to us in case we wanted to come in here and go... I'm trading with Fletchers, I'm trading with Fletchers. Oh, I need more string. I can just drop down here and, uh, boy, that's a long drop. I forgot how tall that shaft is. And and grab some more string and then just pop right back up here. So I think I'm probably going to leave this entrance and we'll leave this corner completely separated, isolated. And then we'll put all of our villagers like along here, maybe even on a second level, and then along this wall too. I may even block off this door. It's just kind of for show, and then put some over here. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. I have plenty of time to design the inside of this building and make it exactly what we need it to be. This right here is where we've been bringing all of our villagers up to go to the library and to, to come into these two buildings when we're ready for that and to go over to the other open area over here once we have all those buildings. So what I'll probably do here is leave this and then when we put all of our villagers in, I'll, I'll leave somebody, you know, out of this corner so that we can keep this. And then we can just punch through this wall right here and bring our villagers out and across here. I really like how this little downstairs uh, porch patio thing worked out for, for the downstairs apartment. Uh, we got a little seat and table and I used, uh, you can't really tell because there's blocks here. Uh, let's see if we can get a good view. I used stairs behind here because walls don't cling to stairs, and so it left the walls smooth, and I'm really happy that I figured that out. Uh, but this this goes nowhere. <laughs> we may dig this out and make this another level of trading with Fletchers if we run out of room upstairs, but for now, I'm just going to leave it. It's just for show. I decided to use moss carpets here because I was using these these blocks and stairs uh, to not connect to the walls. But I think that this might be a good way to do mob proofing around the area in the future. Uh, the moss carpets, you know, they're obviously not 
the same as grass. They stand out a bit, but they're way better than actual carpet for uh, disguising, masking, uh, camouflaging the fact that we're mob-proofing. So I think what I might do is I might just put moss carpets all over, like, this hillside and the hillside back here. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably do some over here, too. But I, I really like the... The, the atmosphere that we create when we don't just torch spam an entire area. I love the little lights that we put on the library and the, the little lanterns that we put on this building, but I don't want to just spam torches everywhere. I want them to be atmospheric. I want the ambiance of having the lights without the ugliness of torches everywhere. And unfortunately, that means that there's going to be a lot of mobs spawning all over the place. And that's just that's just life in Minecraft when you're playing on anything other than peaceful. And I'm willing to live with that, but I would also like to mob proof a little bit here and there so that we don't end up with a whole bunch of mobs that just live in like the corner of this building, hiding from the sun and living on like the ledges and stuff. Uh so we will we will look for other creative ways to mob proof but I think the moss carpets are a really good idea for small, limited areas that we don't look at very often, so it won't be ugly and it won't really, you know, obstruct our view. But, uh, I, I don't know. I just, like, I, I, I saw the moss carpet sitting in storage, and I thought, hey, you know what? I've got to hide those blocks over there somehow. So I decided to just set some of this out. We could also use some leaves that we uh, silk touch off of trees and make like bushes around the area to give it a little bit more life. But for now, I didn't feel like messing with, uh, you know, some nature decorations. I just wanted to get the buildings built, and I think that they turned out pretty damn well. Now I think it's time to move on. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I want to dry out this section of river. All the way from here where our road ends and where the last squid cell is, all the way to what I keep calling a sandbar. But it's not. It's just the, the sand is a little bit less deep. It's a little shallower there. It's the natural end of the river. It leads out into that bay out there. And I would like to take the road around here in a nice curve. And I don't know if I'm going to keep this hill here or if that's going to go away too. But I would like the road to curve over here. I just want to follow the natural curve of the river. So as you can see, I have some netherrack. Instead of using sand like we did when we cleared out the Guardian Temple, I'm just going to use this Instamine block, and uh, I'll section things off, and I also have sponges that I'll use, and I'll dry the whole place out. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just torch the whole place and make sure that it's very well lit, and then I'll just lay a layer of dirt like I did under this section of road, and I'll, I'll lay the road. So I'm not going to bother time-lapsing. You've already had enough time-lapse for one day, and I don't want to punish you. So I'm just going to get to work, and uh, I'll, I'll update you as I make progress. Oh man, that's real loud. Don't mind me, I'm just making use of a really good game mechanic that they introduced not too long ago. Uh, just, you know, used up most of my sponges and decided to come dry them out here way faster than cooking them. And, thanks to the beauty of using a hoe on sponges now, look at how quickly the whole task is done. And we once again have a full stack of dry sponges. God, I love that mechanic. And just like that, this section of river is completely dry. I don't think I'm going to bother mining out all of the netherrack, actually. I think I'm going to light up each of these individual sections as well as they need to be lit. I will line the second block down with dirt to completely level it off, and then I'll line the rest with road. I'll make a nice curve road through here, and we'll end it right there. And I think that's where I'm going to build the seawall. What I would like to do, what I'm envisioning, is that I'm going to build a nice thick seawall with like a walkway on top and either a wall or like a glass pane or something just like waist high all the way across so that you can you know walk along it take a leisurely stroll along the seawall and and look out at the bay and the ocean beyond uh but i'm not sure i don't have a design for it it's just sort of coming together in my mind 
And I think instead of that, like, yellow and black striped barrier at the end of the road, I think what I'll do is I'll make... Hi there. What are you doing? Just, just burning to death over there in your full leather armor? You know, I'm, I'm filming here right now. Rude. Anyhow, I think I'll just take the road up and make, like, a cul-de-sac right here. And, and the road will kind of end in just, just one of those dead ends. I'm almost picturing, like, Ocean City or, you know, one of those seaside communities where, where the roads end at the beach or before the beach. And there's just kind of a dead end and a turnaround. And then there's, like, pedestrian area beyond that. I think that might be what we'll do here. Let me get to work. I think I'm going to dig out all of this clay because clay is kind of hard to find at times. And then once I've done that, I'll start lighting it up and filling it in. Dolphins! We've got dolphins! Oh my god! Look, there's dolphins out in the bay! <gasps> Alright, I don't know why I'm so excited about those dolphins. But uh, I, I got I got the whole place lined with dirt, so I'm, I'm going to get the road in place. How about that? I just... I don't know why. I just, I saw the dolphins and I got real excited. And now they've left. Nope, they're not. They haven't left us. They're back. Hi, dolphins. Hello. Hello, swim friends. Okay, okay. No, for real. I'm, I'm going to do the road now. So the idea that I had for the, the dead end road down here kind of evolved in my head over the last couple days. I made the cul-de-sac dead end like I mentioned, but... Uh, I had pictured kind of a wharf with a pedestrian walkway on top of it, and and that's not what we ended up with. Uh, I did not make a wharf at all. There's no, like, break wall style, you know, end of the end of the ocean. I was picturing a big solid stone structure, and instead we ended up with a very cool boardwalk. Uh, so here's... Here's the, the road curving over and ending in just a circle. The way I picture this is, you know, cars could drive in here and then just kind of loop around, drop off their passengers, and then fuck off. Uh, and here, we have this really cool pedestrian boardwalk. And uh, this is what I'm envisioning for the whole thing. I modeled this kind of after the boardwalk in Myrtle Beach. It's got this really cool lighter and darker kind of checkerboard pattern. And some cool railings that go along the side. And these old school, almost gaslight looking lamp posts. And uh, it's got little uh, things that jut out from the boardwalk for seating areas. Where you can hang out with your friends and just kind of mingle and, and look at the sights. And uh, I wanted to do something like that. So I modeled what I plan on doing. And this is not the whole length. This is going to be... Probably significantly longer than this in both directions, depending on what kind of development we do over this direction. But since this is the area that I wanted to develop for all of the villager infrastructure, I figure this will go quite a ways over this way, and it'll have periodic stairs up kind of like that that come up onto the boardwalk, and uh, every once in a while we'll have a seating area that juts out. I don't know how often I want to do them, but I'd like at least one or two more. And, uh, this, this is, I'm a fan of this. Uh, this is all spawn-proof. Except for this. This isn't, you know, this is upper block. But, uh, it's, it's well lit enough that we don't have to worry about anything spawning here. So I'm pretty sure this whole thing is safe. Uh, not that, you know, anything out here is. But, you know, we won't have mobs congregating on the boardwalk. If, if we want an audience, I'm gonna have to take down the lights in the seating area and let them spawn there. <laughs> anyway, why don't we uh why don't we take a look at how this looks on the map? It's uh it's a little funky on the map, but I really like the checkerboard kind of pattern that we've got going on. It's a very unique look for the the end of the road, and that's what I like about it. What I said about extending down is I'm thinking it'll come all the way down to here. And uh what I might do is uh, extend it up here and then make this a little beach area. And then I might I might fill this in with something for the villagers. I might make this m like an extension of the boardwalk. And then I might extend the boardwalk here and kind of end it here in a, in a ramp that comes down 
to this beach, and then we may extend the beach a bit. I'm not sure yet. But that's a project for the future. Uh, let me show you what it looks like from the water. I extended uh, oak pillars all the way down to the seafloor, and none of them are floating like on the sand, so they all look anchored. And in here, underneath, I do have a bit of stone, because this was where we sealed up all of the, you know, the, the dried out river area. And I love the way that the, the mossy stone bricks look in just kind of streams and lines kind of flowing along here. I'm a big fan of this, but it's just, it's one of those little details that we will probably never see again. I just wanted to show it to you now because I think it's, I think it's cute. I think it looks nice. And uh, it's just, just a bit of a detail for us. It's not something that we will ever see or use probably ever again. I really wasn't sure where I wanted to end this episode since I just made that cul-de-sac and boardwalk and I, I thought I was going to come up here on top of the library and put my back to it. And then I remembered that we built two buildings in this episode and that our town is really pulling together. So I'm going to end it here with a nice view behind me of all of the town, all the new buildings. And uh, I will I will tell you goodbye for this episode because I think we've gone on for long enough. So I'll catch you in two weeks for the next vanilla Minecraft episode, and then we'll do one more after that, and then we will take a hiatus, not an end, to this series. I'll talk to you soon, brother. I miss you.